It's moments like these that make collegiate sports so important, how they can bring together an entire school no matter race, background, or ethnicity. The athletes helping to bring these communities together, however, are being exploited. In 1906, the National Collegiate Athletics Association, or NCAA for short, was organized to establish eligibility rules and draw up competition. In the early 1900s, college sports became so competitive that colleges began to pay athletes to play, although they did not attend their university. This led to the NCAA stepping in in 1942 and issuing the Sanity Code, which limited financial aid for athletes' tuition and fees. In the early 1950s, the code was modified to include a stipend to prevent Southern universities from leaving the NCAA. A stipend is a fixed payment that covers living expenses, almost similar to an allowance. However, throughout the 1950s, schools were still struggling with the issue of offering athletic scholarships. A major opponent to scholarships was to maintain the amateurism that is college sports and to serve the mission of higher education. Therefore, the Ivy League schools such as Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and Princeton decided to refuse athletic scholarships to prevent their cause. Although this added fuel to the fire to the already heated debate of college athletes getting paid, it did not prevent the growth of the NCAA. By 2010, there were over 1,000 members of the association and it brought in $757 million in one fiscal year. With this being said, each and every day throughout the season, a player puts in enormous amounts of effort trying to get through the meetings, workouts, and practices, all while getting in their studies and homework. Above all else, these players make the universities millions of dollars a year and receive nothing in return. Dave Wilson cites in his interview how he saw some guys unable to go out to eat with the team because they simply could not afford it. If the university could just give a small salary to players, they would benefit greatly, says Kevin Zamluski. We're here with five-star quarterback recruit Alexander Mervine, and he'll be announcing where he'll be spending the next four years of his life. I'm Alex Mervine, and I'm committing to the Ohio State University. Man, life's great. Man, if I can stay healthy, the next four years of my college will be paid off. Oh my god, my back. Oh god. Although this may seem fairly comical, this situation occurs all too often in the collegiate sports world. Take Inky Johnson, for example. By his sophomore season at the University of Tennessee, he already was considered a top 30 draft pick, guaranteeing him millions of dollars. But in the second game of his sophomore campaign, he tore ligaments and arteries in his shoulder and was able, unable to play football ever again. When his shoulder had to be amputated, so did the millions he was guaranteed if he could have just finished the season healthy. Another terrible case of this unfortunate event would be the injury of Ifo Okpre Alumnu, a talented Oregon cornerback who sustained an injury to his right leg in the practice leading up to the championship game. Also a projected first round draft pick, he was guaranteed tens of millions of dollars if he could just stay healthy. Although he did get a $1 million insurance policy with Oregon, this money pales in comparison to the multi-millions he would have been awarded if he was healthy and able to be drafted. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't have any money for clothes, for travel you have, you have TV appearances, you have fundraisers, you have uh, all kinds of situations. But I feel like if you're in a sport where jerseys are being sold with your last name on them, then you should get like a portion of that. Like if you're being featured on a video game, you should get at least a little bit. Furthermore, opposers to the payment of student-athletes say it's just not possible to come up with a fair and lawful way to distribute payments to athletes. 
Detractors say universities just don't have the money. However, according to many economists, particularly David Barry, a professional of economics at Southern Utah University, it is absolutely possible to pay student athletes. Although almost all universities in the NCAA barely break even or make money in a fiscal year, Barry states this is what they are designed to do. In his 2015 interview with the Huffington Post, Barry declares they're nonprofits. Their incentive is to spend every cent that comes in. That doesn't mean the universities don't make money, it just means they spend all of what they make. Additionally, the university themselves wouldn't have to necessarily pay the students fully. If the NCAA classified the student athletes as employees, they then could apply for the federal work study program, which gives students jobs during the school year to earn money. With the FWS paying for more than half the salaries, it would leave all the schools in the NCAA to come up with the other $60 million, which they could easily do. Not only is the payment of athletes possible, it would be easy as well. These athletes deserve to be paid for their efforts and what they do for their colleges. Although this solution is very possible, there are other ways athletes can be compensated as well, such as from their very own jersey sales as well as from endorsements and video game features. Right now, the NCAA does not even allow athletes to profit off their own name. When someone buys an athlete's jersey, the university receives all the profit and the athlete is left with none. Meanwhile, a liberal arts major can feature in commercials and advertisements and market themselves, whereas if an athlete did this, they would be suspended indefinitely. Meanwhile, these student athletes are also spending numerous hours a day on their particular sport as well as typical student work for a college student. Was it hard as a student to focus on your studies while playing football in college? It was, honestly, I don't know how I did it. <laughs> it uh, the average college athlete, at least in the early 80s, easily, at the minimum, spent 40 hours a week on their athletic activity. Dave and Kevin stated, the workload on student athletes' shoulders is beyond belief. From the meetings and film sessions to the workouts and practices, it's hard to even schedule classes. Sometimes athletes can miss up to a week of school due to travel for a sport, as McHenry Athletic Director Barry as Burmeister being, explains um, here. As a student, do you think that playing in the, in the collegiate sport can negatively affect the athlete's education that they receive? Oh, I'm sure. Um, when they go on the road and they're on the road for, sometimes they might not be in a classroom for two weeks. You know, they have tutors that go with you, but yeah. being in that social, mm -hmm. you know, group setting and, and things like that would affect you negatively. While it's hard enough for the average student to keep up with classes, it's almost impossible for the athletes to do it. With this being said, a little compensation for all the time and work put in is not too much to ask for. Typical Americans working these hours make salaries over $50,000 a year. These student athletes deserve, at the very least, some sort of payment or allowance for their work. With this hard work, many detractors think these athletes getting compensated enough with their scholarship. But as Mr. Burmeister said previously, athletes are on the road for weeks at a time out of the classroom. Thus, they aren't even fully capable of taking advantage of their free education that they're promised. Simply put, all collegiate athletes deserve to be paid in some way. Not only do they bring in huge amounts of money into their college, but Americans all over the country love college sports and wouldn't want anything to prohibit their success. If collegiate athletes were to be paid, it would allow for student athletes to focus more on academics because they wouldn't have to make it to the next level to provide for themselves or their families which would further increase the number of collegiate athletes. And by increasing the number of collegiate athletes, it will also increase the amount of young, educated Americans. Americans who will eventually become leaders of this country and hopefully leads to more widespread and advanced learning.